was Christmas Day in the workhouse, and the cold bare walls were bright, with garlands of green and holly, and the place was a pleasant sight, for with clean washed hands and faces, in a long and hungry line, the paupers sat at their tables, for this is the hour they dine. And the guardians and their ladies, although the wind is east, have come in their furs and wrappers to watch their charges feast, to smile and be condescending, put pudding on pauper plates, to be hosts at the workhouse banquet they've paid for with the rates. Well, the paupers are meek and lowly, with their thank ye kindly mums, so long as they fill their stomachs, what matter it whence it comes? But one of the old men mutters and pushes his plate aside. Great God, he cries, but it chokes me, for this is the day she died. The guardians gazed in horror. The master's face went white. Did a pauper refuse his pudding? Could their ears believe aright? Then the ladies clutched their husbands, thinking the man would die, struck by a bolt or something from the outraged one and I. But the pauper sat for a moment, then rose, made a silence grim, for the others had ceased to chatter and trembled in every limb. He looked at the guardian's ladies, then eyeing their lords, he said, I eat not the food of villains whose hands are foul and red, whose victims cry for vengeance from dark and hallowed graves. He's drunk, said the workhouse master, or else he's mad and raves. Not drunk nor mad, said the pauper, but only a hunted beast who, torn by the hounds and mangled, declines the vulture's feast. I care not a curse for the guardians, and I won't be dragged away. Just let me have my fit out. It's only on Christmas Day the black past comes to goad me and pray in my burning brain. I'll tell you the rest in a whisper. I swear I won't shout again. Get your hands off me, curse you. Hear me right out to the end. You come here to see how paupers the season of Christmas spend. You come here to watch us feeding as they watch the captured beast. Well, here why a penniless pauper spits on your paltry feasts. Do you think I will take your bounty and let you go home and think you're doing a noble action with the parish's meat and drink? Where is my wife, you traitors? The poor old wife you slew. Yes, by the Lord above me, my aunt was killed by you. Last winter, my wife lay dying. Starved in a filthy den, I had never been to the parish, I came to the parish then. I, I swallowed my pride in coming, for ere the ruin came, I held up my head as a trader and bore a spotless name. I came to the parish craving bread for a starving wife, bread for the woman who loved me through fifty years of my life. And what do you think they told me, mocking my awful grief, that the house was open to us, but they wouldn't give out relief? Back to the filthy alley was a cold, raw Christmas Eve, and the baker's shops were open, tempting a man to thieve, but I clenched my fists together and held my head awry. So I went home empty-handed, and mournfully told her why. Then I told her the house was open. She'd heard the ways of that, for her bloodless cheeks went crimson, and up in her rag she sat, crying, Bide the Christmas here, John. We've never had one apart. I think I could bear the hunger. The other would break my heart. Oh, through that eve I watched her, holding her hand in mine, praying the Lord and weeping till my lips were salt as brine. I asked her once if she hungered, and as she answered no, the moon shone in through the window, set in a wreath of snow. Then the room was bathed in glory, and I saw in my darling's eyes 
that faraway look of wonder that comes when the spirit flies. Her lips were parched and parted. Her reason came and went, for she raved of her home in Devon where her happiest years were spent. And the accents, long forgotten, came back to the tongue once more, for she talked like the country lassie I wooed by the Devon shore. And she stood on her feet and trembled, fell back on the rags and moaned, crying, give me a crust, I'm famished, for the love of God, she groaned. I flew from the room like a madman up to the workhouse gate, crying food for a dying woman. And the answer came too late. They drove me away with curses, and I fought with a dog in the street, and tore from the mongrel's clutches a crust he was trying to eat. Back through the filthy byways, back through the trampled slush, up to the crazy garret wrapped in an awful hush. My heart stood still at the threshold, and I paused with a sudden thrill. For there, in the silvery moonlight, my nance lay cold and still. Up to the blackened ceiling the sunken eyes were cast, and I knew on those lips all bloodless my name had been the last. She'd called for her absent husband, O oh God, had I but known, had called in vain and in anguish, had died in that den, alone. Yes, here, in a land of plenty, we are loving women dead, cruelly starved and murdered for a loaf of the parish bread. At yonder gates last Christmas, I craved for a human life. You who would feed us paupers, what of my murdered wife? There, get ye gone to your dinners, don't mind me in the least. Think of your happy paupers eating their Christmas feast, and when you recount their blessings in your smug parochial way, say what you did for me too, only last Christmas day. <laughs>